Okay, and welcome to week four of the photography class. And uh, as you know, the semester is winding down at an alarming rate. Uh, we basically have this week and part of next week to finish uh, the classes. Now, uh, that does not mean to say uh, that there can't be things going on between then and the final exam, uh, but uh, there, will no be, there will not be formal classes beyond next week. And so today we're going to finish up the lecture material that will be covered, or this week we'll be uh, finishing up the lecture material that will be covered uh, on the final exam. And what I wanted to talk about today is a topic uh, that doesn't necessarily uh, come up a lot, at least uh, in, in traditional photography, uh, but cinematography. And the reason why it's becoming important uh, is largely because the DSLR is just as capable of recording video as it is taking pictures. Uh, to be honest with you, the technology is so similar now that there's almost no difference. And so it is possible uh, that in the near future, if not already, we will be seeing little video clips as pictures. And so you'll be seeing uh, pictures that include some movement. There's no reason why you can't do that. And so to a degree, uh, it is part of the package. And so uh, the moving picture is what we're going to talk about today. And as we said, DSLRs are movie cameras. And so uh, just as you can take a snapshot, you can also record a video clip. And so there's a difference between shooting random video or home movies and a video shot, which is really what we're going to talk about today. Now, most of this is going to be theoretical. And I'll tell you in advance, I'm not going to require you uh, to send a video clip. Uh, at this point, I'm just uh, really just trying to, to talk theoretically uh, so that we cover this much of it uh, for your interest. So more and more, we're seeing movies playing around us. Uh, this, you know, instead of putting movie, uh, little images up on Facebook and things like that, we're putting movies there. Everybody's got a YouTube channel, etc. cetera. Uh, and some things are actually better expressed through motion. And they're not always just things that move. Uh, camera motion affects that as well. Uh, and uh, these days with modern video, uh, movies are easier to show. Now to understand that, uh, if you would, let's say you were a photographer, say 30 years ago. So you would take a picture, you would develop it, you would frame it, you would put it on your wall, and anytime you wanted to look at it or show it, uh, you could bring someone into your, your room and say, look at this beautiful picture. Uh, or you could uh, put a, a bunch of pictures up in a gallery and say, look at this beautiful artwork. On the other hand, to show a movie, you would have to set up a projector and have a theater room, and that's a completely different experience. These days, you could actually whip out your little cell phone and show somebody a movie. So for that reason, our times are changing. Even some picture frames show movies. So if you see those little digital picture frames, which have little video, little images in them, you can also have videos as well. Now, let's talk for a minute about what is known as the shot. If you've got a video shot or a movie shot, let's say, that's different than a picture, but not entirely. A shot implies some kind of movement. It could be camera movement. It could be movement of the subject. But in general, a shot has to move. Uh, but it's usually indicating the camera's doing something. Sometimes there is no movement of the camera, as we said. The shot typically tells some kind of a story. It's self-contained. And so this is different than the random, you know, starting your cell phone camera, recording some kind of a party, and then you find that when you look at it, it's boring. A shot is a specific movement of specific collection of things that tell some kind of a story. So a shot must have a beginning. So just like you frame an image, you're taking a picture of something, you frame that image, you compose that image, the shot has to have a beginning. And whatever beginning that is has to be good. It has to look good. A shot must have an end. So whatever your shot leads to, whatever the last thing is in your shot must also be composed. So, if you're going to do a shot that you've planned, you start with what it's going to look like at the beginning, and then you follow it to the end and make sure you know what that's going to look like, and then you provide the transition. So the actual movement involves the transition. 
So the types of shots that you can do. For example, panning. Panning involves basically moving the camera laterally left and right, pointing it. Assuming that you're on a tripod or standing there, you're directing the camera like this. Panning right goes like that. Panning left goes like that. Tilting would be when you've got your camera, you're tilting it up or down. So you're looking above or below from a stable position. Zooming, and this is something you can't do that easily with a cell phone, that involves basically changing the focal length of the lens. And we talked about the optics of cameras. And so you would go from a normal lens to a telephoto or a wide angle. And the effect is that you appear to be moving in on something or further away. Dollying and trucking mean that you're physically moving closer or further away from something. So you're not zooming, you're actually moving in. So if you're dollying, you can see things going by. And trucking is just dollying from side to side. They, have, they use two words for that. I don't really know why. Now an elevator shot is when the camera is physically moving up and down on some kind of an elevator. And uh, some tripods come with elevators and some tripods come with what's called pedestals. Uh, but that's not necessarily always going to be the case. Now, crane shots and drones obviously are different. Uh, that's where you've got the camera way up in the sky and you're controlling it by remote control. And so those uh, could be a whole other topic of discussion. But all of those uh, can give you various types of shots. Now, the philosophy of a video shot or a movie shot, cinematography, is the shot necessary? In other words, don't create some elaborate camera movement just for the sake of creating an elaborate camera movement. Is this showing something? Is this telling the story? And is it doing so efficiently? Uh, typically, you try to make them as simple as you can. The move must reveal something. If the move doesn't show anything that wasn't in the original first part of the shot, there's no point in doing it. Each end of the shot must be composed. It's got to look good at the beginning. It's got to look good at the end and it doesn't want to feel rushed. Think in terms of keyframes. Basically, you start the shot, that's a keyframe, you know where the camera starts, you know where it's going to end, and everything in between, you are basically creating uh, what's called tweens if you're doing it computer graphically. But the movement is getting you from the first keyframe to the last keyframe. You're just basically doing it manually. Now, how do you display cinematography. Well, it has to have a context most of the time. Now, typically, this is going to be part of a project. Now, as I'm telling you, uh, we're talking about the shots as if they're not, but usually they are. I mean, we can, we can say that we can display shots, but typically if you're going to do video shots, there's some purpose for it. It's part of a larger project, so we're, we're not pretending that isn't true. Uh, but uh, you can have a context where you have uh, a, a photo display, which includes moving video. There's no reason why you can't do that. So it doesn't mean you can't include moving images in your exhibition if you are so inclined. If that's what you want to do, uh, you can put them there. Or this could be a demo reel where you would be looking for work as a cinematographer. Okay, and so I have prepared a few simple examples that I would like to show you now of some cinematography in action. Here would be a simple pan where we're revealing a larger context. Now, so that wouldn't be done in one frame. That would be done through the camera movement. Now here, we're using the pan to follow motion. Notice it's a little shaky because of the zoom lens. And we come back out again and see a larger context. And that would not be the same as the single shot alone. And here, we've got something that's a little less predictable. We don't know exactly what those geese are going to do, but we are going to try to keep the shot framed while they lead us through it until a certain point where we regain control and basically zoom out to reveal a larger context so we can see where the geese are in their environment. Now, this is a shot you could hold on to for a while. That could be a shot in itself, but here we can also reveal a context. Now here we're telling a story. We're, we're basically describing North Carolina wildlife resources and then we're showing what that would look like. So this could be kind of a public relations thing. Finally this 
if we're taking the zoom out of the church and we stop it here because we only want to reveal what we want to see. We don't want to reveal the fence. And so we stop it before we get there. Okay, and again, I'm not going to put a specific assignment here for this uh, because I don't know that we have time for that. I'd much rather you work on your final portfolios. Uh, but I want you to think in terms of cinematography for some of the things you might want to do in the future. And also, you will be expected to understand something about cinemagraphic principles on the final exam.